Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Here I am at the bottom now of a drift dam. It's not a thing of architectural beauty, but it does have some nice running water for you to look at, except that I'm probably blocking the view. It's a little bit less windy down here though, but I've got sort of big feelings of disaster movies where there's all that water just to my right behind this huge wall, and uh, hopefully there's no little uh, leaks gonna spring anytime. Anyway, we talked about income tax. Now we're gonna talk about the other kind of income tax, which is a lot more insidious because it's not called a tax. Instead, it's called national insurance, but make no mistake, it's a tax just by a different name. Now what you're doing with national insurance is you are building up credits against future benefits. So for instance, my national insurance contributions I pay now um, are paying for my parents to receive their old age pension. Uh, when they were working, they paid national insurance so that their parents could get their old age pension. Um, likewise, my nas current national insurance uh, uh, payments, contributions, are indirectly funding, for instance, for my wife to receive a uh, child benefit. Right? So, it's important to know, though, that there's no fund somewhere with my name on. Just because I'm paying national insurance contributions, I'm not, for instance, building up a pot for myself out of which my own old age pension will be paid one day. No, there's no fund as such. Well, there is, but it's kind of a short-term moving fund. My contributions pay for those who need benefits now. Right? But it's a tax by another name, that's all. But an important one. Now, there are four classes of national insurance contributions. So I'm just gonna go through them uh, each and give you some percentages and stuff, um, and then just explain how it uh, is, um, how you, the actual logistics of collecting it at the end. So class one national insurance contributions are for employees and employers. So those who have a job working for somebody else and for those who give them that job. And it's all based, and the amounts that are contributed are based on how much you earn as the employee. And it goes in three bands. I'm going to move slightly to this side. Hopefully to make room for the graphic again. <clears throat> Lots of graphics on these taxes, I'm afraid, but uh, hopefully it, it uh, eases the explanation. So on the first £110 a week you earn, dealing with what you pay as the employee first, you pay nothing. It's a nil rate on the first £110 a week. On the income you earn between £110 a week and £844 a week, you will pay 11% national insurance. On the income you earn in excess of £844 a week, you will pay 1%. So three bands, three different rates. Now your employer, on the first £110 a week, will pay nothing, same as you. But on everything above £110 a week, your employer will pay 12.8%. So it's an expensive tax for employers to pay. That's class one, national insurance contributions. There are subclasses in there, but I really don't want to make things more complicated than is necessary. Things, uh, different class for uh, what employers pay if you have a company car and things like that, or what they'd pay if they've been investigated by the revenue. There's different classes for that, but class one as a whole is for employees and employers. Now class two is a fixed contribution paid by those who are self-employed not employees now, those who are self-employed. So if you decide to become self-employed, you must notify the revenue and they will set up a direct debit and you begin paying £2.40 per week. Flat, fixed rate. And it, that just you know, assures your credits against future benefits. That's dead straightforward. Class two, self-employed, £2.40 a week. Job done. Class three, uh, national insurance contributions are voluntary ones. Now, why on earth would you voluntarily pay a tax? Well, uh, let's say you don't have a complete uh, national insurance contribution record, which means you might not get a full state pension. Well, you can voluntarily pay, um, and there's a flat rate for that as well, and uh, that is currently £12.05 per week. Flat contribution, vo uh, voluntary. 
Um, you can also uh, pay extra money as a lump, particularly for your state pension, to increase that pension. And usually when you get a state pension forecast, they will tell you whether or not you can uh, increase your benefits in that way. But you can voluntarily pay benefits at £12.05 a week, and those are called Class 3 national insurance contributions. Finally, you've got Class 4, and these again are for self-employed people. And this is taxed on profits. So just as class one was taxed on employees based on their earnings, class four is, is uh, charged to self-employed people based on their profits. So on the first, £5,715 per year of profit, there is no national insurance to pay. Between 5715 and £43,875 of profit, there is an 8%. Uh, national insurance to pay. And on profit in excess of 43,875, there is a 1% national insurance contribution to pay. So again, pretty s simple bandings. The, the, the problem is, and certainly for people in my job and accountants and things like, is that we have to remember all these different percentages for different people. But you know, don't feel sorry for me, that's uh, what I chose to do. So those are the different bandings for national insurance contributions. Now, how does it work? How do you, uh, what are the mechanics of actually contributing? Well, the good news is, if you're an employee, you never see any of this money anyway, because it's all sorted out through the pay-as-you-earn system, and when you get your pay slip, you will see income tax, national insurance, and what you get in the bottom right-hand corner of your pay slip, it's all done for you. So you don't have to worry about making sure you pay enough, it just all sorts itself out for you. Same with income tax. If you are self-employed and you have to pay class, pay class 4 contributions based on your profit, well, that's done through your annual tax return. So I hope that uh, explains national insurance contributions. Be aware that it's a tax. It just doesn't sound like one. But you can see it's a tax, particularly if you're an employee, on your pay slip every month. So I hope that's helpful. We're going to move on next time to capital gains tax. You'll be pleased to know it's a lot simpler. Uh, <laughs> um, but for now, from Drift Dam, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.